What's up guys, TechLab here, and today we thought we'd do another video on the Radeon RX 6600, and in particular we wanted to see if we can ray trace on it. So I decided to do a video on this because I see a lot of comments out there, particularly in videos and on social media, saying that the Radeon RX cards cannot ray trace. Now we know that's not true because Radeon cards have been able to ray trace even from the 5000 series, but during the 5000 series it was pretty much a software implementation, which means it was pretty crap. But since then Radeon have released the 6000 and now the 7000 and they're all using the big Navi, which means they have a hardware implementation. So of course we can actually ray trace on them, but is it any good? Now to find out, we've obviously been dropping our card into a machine and doing some benchmarking. This is a card that we were using for our tests. It is a Radeon RX 6600. There's two reasons why we use this one. The first is because it's probably going to be the most common thing that budget gamers will have. And the second is that it's the only 6000 series card that we've got. Well, that's not quite true. We do have an RX 6500 XT, but nobody wants to see that. No, I'm not actually a big gamer when it comes to ray tracing. No, I mean, I do love the additional fidelity it brings, but because it's so expensive to get hardware that actually plays it and runs it fine, I don't generally turn it on. But with AMD cards actually going down in prices now and these becoming more affordable to many, if they can do it, then it's going to look pretty good for us in the future. In my main system, I use an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti, and I generally don't turn ray tracing on then. I have done it in the past on a couple of games like Chernobylite, but the actual drop in performance, even on an NVIDIA card, isn't actually quite worth it. The game looks fantastic as it is, so I don't bother turning it on. But can the 6600 actually give us a decent playing experience when it comes to turning on ray tracing? Obviously, the only way to find out is to take a look at some benchmarks. So as you can see from those benchmarks, it was neither great or terrible. The card actually performed way better than I thought it would, particularly with the comments that I read out there. And on some of those games, we actually got a decent playing experience. Up first, we had Control, a game that left us confused for a while when trying to even get ray tracing enabled because the option simply wasn't there. 
It turns out though that it automatically starts in DirectX 11 and you have to open it with the DirectX 12 exe file. But once running, we realized that it wasn't even worth the effort. In 1080p with a high preset and no ray tracing, the RX 6600 managed to get a respectful 66 frames per second with very smooth gameplay. But when enabling ray tracing, that more than half to just 29. Not the greatest starts and the ray tracing effects were not even that visible due to the game being basically unplayable. Cyberpunk 2077 was a game we expected the RX 6600 to fall completely flat on its face when enabling ray tracing and we quickly found out that we were right. Just like in our previous testing, without ray tracing the RX 6600 for some reason locks itself to 60 frames per second in this game and it does this more than comfortably but with ray tracing on the game plummets to just 27. Although at least this time we can see a huge difference in the visual quality the performance is just too low to get a decent gameplay experience. In Doom Eternal, the RX 6600 without ray tracing performs extremely well, reaching over 184 frames per second with ease. And this awesome optimization really does save it when ray tracing is enabled. Even though the frames per second do half when enabling ray tracing, it doesn't really matter because half of a lot is still a lot. And the game is completely playable, getting around 83 frames per second and looking amazing while it does it. Metro Exodus is another game that runs extremely well on the RX 6600 where we see an average FPS of 169 without ray tracing. And just like Doom when enabled, the performance drops to about half, leaving you with just enough to play the game smoothly. Now averaging 63 frames per second, the game not only runs well, but it also looks stunning. The ray tracing effects within Metro Exodus have to be some of the best we've seen when it comes to overall quality, and it feels as though you really have stepped up the resolution and graphics. Out of all the games we tested, Shadow of the Tomb Raider had one of the least ray tracing effects. When playing without ray tracing on, the RX 6600 managed to get an average of 105 frames per second, but still, when enabling the basic ray trace shadows, the frames per second take a big dive. Still getting over 60 frames per second, the game is more than playable though, and it does look good, even if now and again there are some weird glitches to the shadows when in caves. So there we have it, we can actually ray trace on an AMD Radeon graphics card. And in this case, we can ray trace perfectly fine on an RX 6600, particularly with those really well optimized games. It's probably not something that I will do with this card because it just doesn't have enough power, but I'm gonna be really interested to see what the higher end cards, particularly the 6900 XT and the 6800 XT can actually do when it comes to ray tracing because I think it's gonna actually be pretty good. You also have to remember that with a Radeon 6000 graphics card, you're gonna get access to all the nice fancy tools just like AMD's FSR which is actually going to give them the boost and we'll probably do some more testing around that in the future. For now though we're just going to stick to the non-ray tracing games and let the rasterization performance of these cards shine through but let me know in the comments below do you have a Radeon 6000 series card and are you playing ray trace games what's your experience like and particularly if you've got one of those higher end ones it'd be awesome to know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and also drop this video a like and we'll catch you in the next one.